Gentlemen, uh, uh, let me open the session. Uh, system engineering and computer technology. Uh, luckily, we have uh, all presentation plus one, and uh, still the same time for uh, whole uh, session. Uh, so, uh, without an uh, introduction, uh, let's start with the first uh, with the first presenter, Mr. Uh, Josef Suter. Uh, Okay, and information for uh, everybody keep to the schedule and I have this analog digital indicator I will use yeah, to, uh, to shorten the presentation. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank you. Uh, welcome to everybody. My name is Josef Schütte. I am a lecturer at the University of Debrecen and in this short talk I would like to present our work about music stimuli recognition from electroencephalogram or just EEG signal. First of all, what was the goal? As we know, when humans are listening to music, they perceive beats, rhythms and melodies. This is the basis of uh, music stimuli recognition, where we want to determine uh, the brainwave response for the different kind of uh, music stimuli. In the previous works, the researchers tried to recognize different kind of emotions from the EEG signal uh, due to user's feedback. For example, sadness, fear, happiness, and so on. But our opinion is that it is an unreliable approach because uh, mood and emotions are not exact and uh, they are changing relatively slowly. For example, I am happy because I can participate in this conference, but I also feel from the questions at the end of my presentation, so my uh, mood also not exact. And uh, uh, this causes an ambiguity uh, during the laboring process because it is rather hard task to determine that an emotion was labeled correctly or not. So we followed another approach. Uh, we want to, to uh, recognize the concrete song from the EEG signal instead of the emotions. In the past, uh, EEG readers was mainly av av available for medical researchers. Uh, fortunately, some years ago, uh, some new commercial devices appeared on the market. One of them is the NeuroSky MindWave, uh, which is one of the most popular and uh, it was used in our uh, study. It is an easy to use dry electrode uh, device which provides single channel uh, data. Uh, it has two electrodes. The first one is positioned on the FP1 position on the forehead, while the second one is an ear clip uh, and it is a reference point on the E1 position according to the, the, to the 1020 uh, electrode system. It has a 512 uh, sampling frequency and it contains a built in bandpass filter. It also uh, provi it provides both uh, raw data, uh, 12 bit wide raw data, and uh, derived values such as edit attention and meditation levels via Bluetooth connection. In our work, we focused only on the raw data and the attention and meditation level was forgotten. Yes, <coughs> to the to the study we de developed an own data acquisition framework in the processing the programming environment. At first, the software establishes a Bluetooth connection with the device. It acquires the raw data uh, uh, from the sensor and save and store into text files. In our uh, study, five person five volunteers participated. At the beginning of the data acquisition, we gave a description about the goal of the experiment, experiment and about the operation of the data acquisition framework and device. They uh, listened uh, 10 different songs, uh, 30 second parts of, from 10 different songs between a 10 second uh, silent gap in order to we can avoid emotion contamination between the different songs and uh, they were aged between 14 and 55 years. Uh, we tried to use uh, different famous 
from the right title for like different famous songs from the net and uh, try to use different songs from different genres. For example, hard rock, pop, club, uh, pop rock, uh, classic, and so on and so on. The list of the songs can be seen on the slide. In addition, a more important information, our collected data and our software is freely available for anybody. Uh, you can download if you want from my web page. Okay, actually this uh, problem or this task can be seen as a general machine learning process which can be described with a machine learning chain. In our case, uh, the chain consists of segmentation, data pre-processing, classifier training, and at the end, the classifier examination. So in the segmentation stage, we can uh, see the incoming uh, information from the sensor as a discretized data flow, which will be divided into small segments, or in other words, into windows. And information content from the window will feed the classifier in the classifier training uh, stage. Uh, we had no any useful information about the optimal size of the window. Therefore, we tested different kinds of window sizes. As you see, we use three, five, and ten seconds low, uh, ten second long windows. Uh, in the training phase, training phase, there was a ninety percent overlap between the windows. But in the test phase, uh, we uh, did not use any overlap between the windows. By this choice, we generated a rich training data set. Actually, the EEG, sim uh, EEG signal can be decomposed into well-known frequency intervals or frequency bands. As you see, uh, the typical frequency bands can be seen in the table, delta, theta, alpha, beta, and gamma. Uh, in the music stimuli recognition approaches, it is a generally accepted uh, approach, uh, the, back, the band separation. We, unfortunately, we have no any useful information about the effect of the music on the individual bands. So we also followed the frequency uh, separation and we try to investigate the effect of the music on the separated uh, uh, bands and on the original signal also. Uh, the frequency interval is a little bit different in the different kind of papers, but the difference is not significant. As you see, uh, there are some related feelings to the, to the bands. And uh, in order to we can separate those bands, we define uh, four uh, fine impulse response filters for because the delta band was suppressed by the built-in bandpass filter of the uh, device so the delta band was omitted from our study. The frequency response of the filters can be seen on the left figure uh, of PS lead colors refers to the different uh, filters why the effect of filtering can be seen on the right figure. <coughs> on the top, there is the original signal, and below, you can see its uh, bands, alpha, beta, theta, and its gamma bands. Okay, the next step is the data be processing in the chain. Uh, we extracted uh, 14 different features from each separated band, and also from the original signal. The list of the features can be seen in the table. Uh, actually, the goal of feature extraction is to filter out relevant information from the raw data with the appropriate feature set. The classifier model will be more efficient, simple, and faster. So as you see, uh, most of the features come from the time domain, but we also use some features from the frequency domain Obviously, in this case, the first step is the fast Fourier transformation in order to, to we change from the time to the frequency domain. And then in the frequency domain, we can calculate different kind of features. Okay, the classifier uh, was an artificial neural network with two layers. We used the, the well-known uh, mean square error, er, error function with uh, L2 normalization. 
without normalization. Uh, the first hidden layer consists of 50 neurons, and uh, we use the tangent activa activation function on the first hidden layer, while the output layer, the activation function was linear, and the number of neurons was equal to the number of classes, so in our case it is 10. Uh, the initial weights come from a modified Gaussian distribution, and uh, the learning algorithm was the gradient descent with a constant momentum value, which was uh, 0 0.15. Uh, during training, we used uh, uh, 1000 epoch limit. Uh, the mini batch size was 10, and the stop condition of the learning was the no improvement in 10. So it means that if there is no improvement in the last 10 epoch, we, the learning process will stop. Okay, and after the <coughs> training process, we tested uh, our uh, classifier, or oh, one important thing. Uh, during the test, uh, we used random hyperparameters in the neural networks, and uh, the, hyperparam the main hyperparameters, such as the initial learning grade, the learning decay factor, and the regularization strength come from an exponential scale, a 10 base exponential scale where the exponent was drawn from a uh, uniform distribution. Okay. At first we used the original signal with a 5 second long window without any modification. Uh, in the first row <coughs> you see our recognition rates. Uh, the recognition rates are the best after SARS trials. And then we separated uh, the different kind of frequency bands. We extracted the features from the separated frequency bands and uh, features feed or was the input of the classifier. You can see our measurements or recognition rates uh, with, with the different kind of bands. And finally, we merged the features from different bands into one big feature vector. And in the last step, the extended feature vector uh, was the input of the classifier. So if we observe <coughs> observe the results, we can see that uh, frequency band separation doesn't cause any improvement also, or also decreased uh, the recognition rate. And uh, actually we reached the hi highest recognition rate with the original unmodified signal. And then in the next step, we also wanted to uh, examine the effect, the effect of the window size. So at first we reduced the window size to three seconds. As you see, it decreased the accuracy. Then we increased the window size to 10 seconds. Uh, the window size extension, the effect of window size extension is, uh, has a positive effect because it increased the accuracy. For example, in the case of subject three, uh, the improvement was more than 6%. Okay, uh, since the highest recognition rate was uh, about 38%, per yes, per 38%, we suppose that some kind of pattern may exist in the signal because it is obviously higher than the probability of a random guess. And then in order to we can find patterns, we also investigated uh, the different confusion matrices. For example, you can see the confusion matrix of subject three. If we examine also the confusion matrix, we can observe a very interesting relation between elapsed time and the recognition rate improvement. So actually, we can conclude that the recognition rate is related to the elapsed time, and it doesn't depend exactly on the real effect of the different kind of music stimuli. So at the end of my uh, presentation, I would like to summarize the key points of our work. At first, we proposed a new approach to the music stimuli recognition, which uh, doesn't require any feedback from the users, so it is more reliable. Next, we show that the recognition of a uh, concrete song is a rather hard task, and the capabilities of the NeuroSky MindWay uh, device is not enough for such a complex classification purpose. And finally, and probably the most important and most surprising result come from the confusion matrices. 
because we observe that the recognition rate is discontinuously increasing with the elapsed time, and it means that uh, it is related to the some kind of meditation level or uh, instead of the real effect of the song. So uh, probably this phenomenon comes from the weakness of the EEG reader. Uh, in order to we can examine this hypothesis, the next step toward this research direction is to test a multi-channel uh, EEG reader, such as the Emotive Apple Pro, uh, which measures uh, EEG signal uh, from 14 points on the head. Thank you for your attention. Any questions? We have time for one, one two, two questions. Have you tried to, to use this, that method to uh, the recognition of and other activities, not only music? Because it's extremely difficult, uh, I think. I think uh, to, to uh, differ between different, uh, the same kind of uh, of activity. Uh, if you compare uh, listening to the music or working or you know solving mathematical equation or something like that, maybe it would be uh, easier to to do the task. Uh, yes, uh, exactly. But it was. Uh, it will be the easier way to test deficiency of the device and also the capabilities of the classifier model and and it was the main cause why we tested um, the effect of music only just the effect of music as in the next step we try to other stimuli eff effects for example videos pictures and so on, but uh, the first result, it was a little bit uh, lower than we waiting for. And after this, uh, this uh, preliminary, let me say preliminary work, could you find <coughs> an indicator uh, what could be described best, uh, the type of music uh, we are listening? Who or a I group I of I indicators? Or I could I you exclude? Exactly. Any? I don't know exactly. Uh, unfortunately. Can I or it's over time? Yes, it is. Okay. It's over. So, thank you very much. <laughs> and the next presenter is Ms. Mintare uh, Hosko-Staita. The floor is yours. Hello, good day. I am Gantara Pashkovskaita, the one of the authors of Advanced Recognition of Lithuanian Digit Names Using Hybrid Approach article. And I would like to shortly present, present the, the main idea, methodology and results of this article. And automatic speech recognition systems design include a number of different mod methods, models and algorithms. The Haydn Markov models is the most common and successful approach for isolated voice command recognition today. But the deep neural network gives us quite precise results of large vocabulary continuous speech recognition. But it requires a high data resources, which are complicated for low resource language such as Lithuanian. To find a solution, to reach the aim of this research is to find a solution to reach as high as possible recognition accuracy of Lithuanian digit names. The one possible solution to achieve this goal is to develop a hybrid spe rec speech recognition system. The hybrid approach provides the possibility that in the case when the answer of recognizers is different, the correct answer could be found using machine learning methods. Uh, for our experience, we selected Corpus Digits 30, when 30 uh, speakers uh, pronounced 10 digit names for 20 times. Uh, the purpose of non-Lithuanian recognizer is used in our experiments is to find out which acoustic models of basic recognition language describe the best properties of phonetic un units of Lithuanian speech. 
the selection of appropriate sequence of phonetic units is a central adaptation task. And for example, in our experiments, it were used Microsoft Speech Server Recognition System and Spanish Speech Recognition System on Microsoft Windows. For Lithuanian, Haydn Markov model based Lithuanian speech recognizers, uh, we used practically Haydn Markov model speech recognizers uh, are either word based and sub word based. Con continuous density Haydn Markov models were used for the creation of Lithuanian recognizers by using the open code software HTK, Haydn Markov models toolkit. Uh, some of the parameters that we used in our experiments are listed below. And the most important parameters with uh, recognition with word based Haydn Markov models recognition system is the number of states and the number of Gaussian per states. Uh, as we get from our later, uh, our previous experiments that the best recognition accuracy of digits 30 corpus was achieved using two additional states and six Gaussians. Recognition with sub were based Haydn Markov models. Uh, lots of uh, experiments were done with using that recognition system. So, 24 different sets of phonemes experiments were established and carried out using digit 30 corpus. And another phoneme based Lithuanian recognizer was prepared using the manually annotated part of speech corpus for its training. The annotation was done with, uh, for in our experiments using a minimal set of phonemes and the sample LT based set of phonemes. Expecting to find if the sample LT set of phonemes is not redundant for a digit recognition task. <coughs> the best results of our experiments of the recognition accuracy of different recognizers are shown in this table. As we could see, the very best result is uh, obtained of Lithuanian phoneme based annotated recognizer uh, and uh, Worst result is based Lithuanian, uh, Lithuanian phoneme based recognizer. And uh, some of the experiments using uh, different phoneme sets like digit 1, digit 2, or digit 60 are described below the table and also in our article. The main point of a, of a hybrid recognition system is a parallel usage of two or more recognizers and processing of the answers of recognition using machine learning algorithms. For example, in the case of Spanish recognizer combined with Lithuanian recognizer, word-based recognizer, each object in the training set has been described using 43 features, which are explained in this table. For example, the first uh, SP probe, the confidence measure of uh, Spanish recognizer decision. Uh, another, for example, is the gender, the speaking gender, male or female. Also, the decision of recognizers are grouped into subjects. The subjects are like that, like true, false, false, true, or, fa or true, false. For example, the first one, two, uh, true equals true, means that both recognizers produce same hypothesis and both hypotheses are correct. Using data mining package VECA, classification research was carried out with five different recognizer combining scenarios. These scenarios are listed below and we get the results all of them of the, com of the <laughs> recognition, uh, uh, recognition accuracy, all of them. Classification experiments were conducted by using 10 different classifiers such as multi-layer perceptron, ADA boost, naiva bias, random forest, and others. Uh, we found, found out that they are the most popular uh, classifiers uh, in the literature. The task of the classification 
is the set uh, is the separate two class classes. True false when both recognizers produce a different hypothesis and the first recognizer produces the correct decision. And the false true when the second recognizer produces the correct decision. The highest classification accuracy from 10 most po popular data mining algorithms for digit names was achieved by random forest classifier when the number of trees is equal to 100. There is, uh, there is also an investigation uh, the recognition errors of different recognizers are shown in this di diagram and we could see that the separate recognizer gives such a results of the recognition error and the best of all of the five are Lithuanian, ba Lithuanian phoneme based uh, annotated recognizer and the worst was a Spanish recognizer adopted for Lithuanian language. The results of the investigation in the form of the recognition error are shown in this table and we could see also that the Lithuanian uh, word-based recognizer combined with Lithuanian phoneme-based annotated recognizers give us the best result. And the others are a little bit worse. Another diagram also shows the similar result and we, as we could see from the, all the diagrams that the worst recognizer combination are Lithuanian word base and, and Lithuanian phoneme base and Lithuanian and the three of them there is a <laughs> in the middle one <laughs> so for the conclusions the results of executed researches of connecting two or three recognizers show that suggested method of using machine learning method could improve the recognition accuracy of, di of Lithuanian digit names. In all five cases, uh, manually annotation of the part of speech uh, corpus enables to increase the recognition accuracy of Lithuanian digit names by 40 persons using sub word based recognizer. And the results presented in the first table shows that the recognition accuracy recognizer uh, with that recognizer uh, using 19 phonemes is better compared with the accuracy obtained using 28 phonemes. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. And any questions? Try to ask. Uh, regarding this slide, uh, last slide, uh, so you said that in, uh, okay, it, it was in previous slide, you said that uh, in some case you model the language with 19 phonemes and in other case uh, you uh, oh. uh, modeled with 28 phonemes. Mm -hmm. What is the exact number of phonemes in the Lithuanian language and how did you, uh, can you reduce the number or increase the number? How okay, so... Uh, I probably w would like to show the, this slide that's a little bit explanation about this. So we used 24 sets of phonemes and uh, every, uh, every uh, set of phonemes was reduced for, for example, without palatization and accentuation or, or SAMPA LT uh, requirements uh, that we have to have l lots of palatization, accentuation and others. So we have we try to reduce the number and to leave only like a graphems mm -hmm. for the digit names and digit are 10 digit names in Lithuanian language but they don't use all of the Lithuanian uh, letters so we just leave the uh, the eight, 19 <laughs> phonemes the less very less uh, amount of the letters <laughs> So when we have done these experiments before four years, done some experiments with VECA because it's open source free and the best in some articles that we read. So that's why we choose that. And it's quite simple to use actually for us. May I ask? Yes, of uh, course. Why Spanish? Why Spanish? You, you mentioned that, but... Uh, I yes, I know. To ask In previous hour research, <laughs> we have done lots of experiments with other languages. 
and we get better results with Spanish, uh, 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 with Spanish pronunciation of our Lithuanian language than others. For example, German is very bad, also was very bad English. It's strange, but it's also very bad. So the Spanish was the winner. The So, thank you very much for the Thank you. We can move to the, and I would like to ask the next presenter, Ivan Kastelan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Good morning still, everyone. Um, I would like to present you shortly the mostly preliminary results of the, of the research uh, on, on a concept of electrical stimulation of touch screens used, uh, which we used for automated verification of mobile devices. Uh, my name is Ivan Kastelan. I'm presenting this work with my colleagues, uh, Neboj Shavukota and uh, my mentor, Nikola. <coughs> Uh, I will firstly, uh, firstly uh, give you the introduction to the work, uh, then I will present you the very simplified model of uh, touch which we used uh, in order to get to the idea of how to uh, stimulate touch screens. Uh, then I will present you the concept of the electrical stimulation uh, which we used and then the final product, uh, the prototype which we made, the stimulation board and the entire system which we used for uh, automated verification of devices which have the touch screens. Then shortly I will give you experimental results and conclude with a few sentences. So what was the motivation for the work? Well, uh, nowadays still there is a lot of manual work uh, in industry of consumer uh, electronic devices. Uh, we were especially targeting the verification step, so when the device is completed uh, then it needs to get to, through the process of final verification before it actually gets to the stores. Uh, and this verification mostly, uh, uh, we, we began our work within the television industry, uh, it was mostly manual. So a lot of uh, people testing different television sets, uh, connecting cables, running tests, uh, getting the results, disconnecting cables and so on and so on. So it's, it's a lot of repetitive work and uh, with this, with such a work, there is a high chance for subjective errors and the throughput of testing is actually very low. And of course, the price of such, such a, a, a testing process is very high because you have manual, uh, manual work. So uh, the, the whole idea of this project, which actually lasts for many, many years already in our department, uh, was to try to find out the ways of automizing this verification step in industry of different consumer electronic devices. So it all started with the TV sets and uh, this was basically our preliminary work. The first work was, was concentrating on TV sets and uh, our department de de designed uh, a lot of different devices which uh, then we used in uh, building such a system. We designed grabber devices which were uh, uh, grabbing the uh, image from the TV from different interfaces uh, and the different generator devices we used to actually uh, generate signal going to the TV. So we create this loop, you will generate the certain signal, uh, the device presents that signal on the screen, we grab uh, uh, what was presented on the screen and then we make a verification to check whether it is okay or not. Uh, using similar idea, you can actually test software on the device, and this was basically our main goal, to, stimula, uh, uh, to make a stimulus which would be uh, something that the user would do, for example, press uh, uh, something on the remote, and then we verify whether the device actually responded in the right way. So the idea for this research came with the, with the idea, let's try to extend this system and try to verify touchscreen-based devices like mobile phones and tablets. But then in order to do that, you need a very good way to actually stimula, uh, make a stimulus for the touch screen before you can verify whether the device responded <coughs> in the right way. So we researched what are the uh, state-of-the-art ways of, uh, uh, of uh, um, making this stimulus for the touch screen. 
and uh, most of the solutions which we found were mechanically based. Uh, you know, some something as you can see on this picture, uh, uh, some uh, machine touching the screen on different parts to to produce a stimulus which the user would do. So we were trying to find out whether it is possible to stimuli uh, to, to 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 make a stimulus uh, stimulate the touch screen using electrically based solution so that we don't have a lot of moving parts that it is something that is constantly touching the screen and just uh, stimulating parts of uh, the screen as we want so in order to get to the to the solution we use the i would have to say very simplified model of the touch which is far from the actual thing but it actually helped us to to uh, uh, get to the idea and uh, make our first experiments so we, uh, since we were targeting capacitive touch screens, which today uh, dominate the industry of consumer electronic devices, uh, we used this very simplified model of introducing the uh, conductor into the electric field of the capacitor. So if you introduce the conductor, then of course you change the capacitance of the capacitor, and touch screen actually senses that change of capacitance. Uh, so if this introduced conductor is grounded, uh, then you reduce the electric field within the uh, conductor and then you uh, change the capacitance so it is detectable. But if that conductor would not be grounded, then you would not actually change anything because if it is very thin, the total electric field would pretty much stay the same. So we tried to use this concept to make a controllable stimulus for the certain point on the screen. So if the certain conductor is touching the screen and it's very short, which we say not grounded, then it doesn't get detected by the touch screen. If it is longer than a certain, uh, certain distance, if it, is, uh, if it has enough mass, which basically represents something like a grounded conductor, then uh, the capacitance would change and the screen would detect. And we actually made some preliminary experiments and we confirmed this, uh, 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 that uh, a very short, thin metal, when you put it on the screen, will not uh, be detected, but if it's longer, then it will. So uh, in our conclusion was that we could constantly hold a conductor touching the screen and then basically make a switching element which would connect it or disconnect it from something larger. And then when it's connected, it touches the screen. When it's disconnected, it is not touching the screen. So this is the, the basic concept that we used. For the switching element, we tried uh, experimentally to see which one would be the best. We, of course, started with um, basic experiments, thinking that maybe MOSFETs or elements like uh, uh, transistors would help, but of course they didn't help. We experimentally confirmed that they do not behave very well because they have their own parasitic <laughs> capacitance which then disturbs uh, the whole idea. So the best switching element which we uh, uh, found out uh, to use was the electromechanical relay. Yes, it's a small mechanical component, but it's still not the moving part. It's a relay which simply turns off and on. So we made the stimulation board with uh, different touch areas, which would then constantly touch the screen. And this is one of our first, uh, first uh, stimulation boards, which we made. Uh, it had 16 by 29 touch areas. Uh, we also experimentally tried to find out the best dimension for the touch. And we found that this touch area of seven by seven millimeters is actually uh, optimal. Uh, it gives you good enough resolution so that you can test different applications because the finger is not uh, small, so the applications cannot really have very small uh, areas which are touchable. The, the, the buttons on the application need to be large enough. So this area was, was good enough to satisfy the resolution for most applications. And we made this separation between them because they, they are not uh, allowed to touch each other. And uh, we found al also an interesting thing that if you stimulate uh, uh, two areas which are next to each other, then they are close enough so that the touch screen actually detects a single touch in between. So you can basically double the resolution by using uh, 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 
consecutive areas to touch the point in between. So we made a device like this. Uh, basically, the PC generates the uh, uh, stimulus. Uh, we made a custom board which basically uh, uh, controlled these relays. Very simple board with shift registers where each bit would control one uh, relay. And uh, we have uh, this, uh, this device then creates a stimulus on the screen. Our grabber device, which we lend from uh, our solution from the TV sets, captures the HDMI picture, sends back to the PC, and then we compare to see whether the device uh, uh, works or not. Uh, we made a system which uh, supports the following um, uh, movements, pressing, releasing, multi-touch, multi-release, and creating some simple lines, and our software then runs the tests and simply reports whether the test pass or fail. Now, very shortly, experimental results. Uh, I, I showed you here um, how, we define, how we decided to use the relay as a switching element. We used some benchmark application on the phone, which, uh, which reports the frequency of touches uh, detected when, when you are using the app. So when we used MOSFET or any other transistor element, we always get a small frequency of touches in the off state and only relay actually uh, gave us a zero frequency on the off state. So the, 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 the uh, mobile phone really never detected a touch when the relay is switched off. When it's switched on, it detected a touch almost perfectly. This uh, benchmark app would give you a 60 hertz uh, frequency if uh, it is a constant touch. So this was very close to the maximum. And finally, we made the prototype device where basically we put this stimulation board, we, put, we uh, touch, the, touch the screen with it, and then we run this uh, our test application. So uh, in conclusion, we finalized this proof of concept for the electrical stimulation. We are still not, uh, we haven't reached the industrial application yet. But uh, it's a promising, promising thing that it is possible to make an electrically based automated system for verification. So in our future work, we will try to improve this system so that it doesn't use the grabber, but instead use the camera so that it actually sees what the device is showing on the screen. Because what you get at the HDMI output doesn't have to be the same as what it is on the screen if the device doesn't work correctly. Thank you for your attention. Yes. Uh, uh, you uh, have you okay, okay. Have you think thought about uh, grouping of relays? Because if I saw your board, then I think that you need a lot of relays. Yes, uh, hundreds, four hundred and something for our. Okay. Can you group them by using some kind of connections? Uh, it, it's possible or not? The problem is that we need a separate relay for a separate area. Each area needs to be separately controlled. So we cannot have some... So if I understood your question, we cannot have a single relay for multiple areas, yes. if that's what you thought. Because basically, if you want this resolution, 16 by 29, each has to be touchable separately. I'm not sure if I understood your question. Okay. Thank you. And these movements, you uh, made the problem with uh, with this sub resolution, yeah, with switching uh, switching bits. Yes, the, the the line is then simu simulated as uh, successive uh, touches, but then we use this. Uh, we touch a single uh, board, then we touch the next one together with it to get the point in between, then only the, the, the right one, and so on. So we make this uh, successive uh, touches to make the line. Uh, how long the matrix? I uh, didn't notice that. Uh, is it transparent? Or how does it work? Because you should have something like uh, output information from the mobile phone. We get the output information from this HDMI output. So this is our first solution. And we are thinking about how to integrate this with something that would look at the screen. Yes, of course, then we would have to touch it, then either remove it and capture the screen or try to find some transparent solutions.
but it's a future work. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. The next speaker uh, is uh, Marius Paulauskas. Hello everyone. <coughs> My name is Marius Paulauskas. I'm from Vilnius Gedvinas Technical University. And I would like to present a uh, presentation of the our colleagues. Application of local local pariah factor <coughs> algorithm to detect anomalies in computer network. So um, here, here, here we see <coughs> the chart of classic shape. Yes, on the horizontal axis we have years, and here we have the number of the threads. And you can see this shape in almost any. Uh, cybersecurity report. So the tendency is clear, but uh, every year the number of threats are growing. So we need to find something to 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 stop this. So <coughs> companies, users uh, consequently lose data, uh, lose money, uh, business are interrupted, and even for infrastructure uh, may be damaged. So uh, why anomalies? Uh, basically, there are <coughs> two main approaches, signature-based intrusion detection systems and uh, anomaly-based intrusion detection systems. Uh, signature-based uh, can, uh, can only detect previously known attacks. Uh, uh, they are precise, and uh, for each new type of attack, the signature database has to be updated. But signature-based uh, has some drawbacks. Uh, they cannot detect new attacks, and then <coughs> they cannot detect uh, the variants of known but uh, modified attacks. So anomaly-based uh, intrusion detection systems uh, can detect new, earlier unseen attacks, yes, and search for the attacks which deviate from created profile of normal activities. But uh, there are main drawbacks. Uh, anomaly-based intrusion detection system should be very <coughs> correctly, um, uh, correctly tuned, or, or parameters should be very <coughs> carefully tuned because uh, there are many uh, false uh, positive uh, alarms. <coughs> For anomaly detection, we use the local outlier factor. Uh, the main idea is that uh, object. Uh, he has <coughs> outlier object, outlier anomaly is a synonym, is the same. <coughs> uh, he has the low density around uh, this point uh, compared with uh, normal data. So if an object has low density, we can find this using local outlier factor and uh, uh, distinguish uh, this point from others. <coughs> there are uh, three steps what we need to do. Uh, we need to calculate the reachability distance is the distance from object to uh, neighbors. Then we need to calculate local reachability density. It's uh, inverse of average uh, reachability distance. And uh, finally, the local outlier factor is the ratio of uh, averages uh, local reachability density. Uh, local outlier factor algorithm is uh, unsupervised algorithm. So it's uh, advantage uh, when we want to analyze data, uh, the big amount of data <coughs> which we cannot label it. So it's, it's, um, <coughs> it, it, it's uh, good in this situation. Uh, <coughs> the data processing and anomaly detection scheme, here we see there are two main parts, training part and detection part. For training, we use only normal data. In computer networks, we have many normal data, and uh, uh, if we compare the normal data with anomaly uh, data, so uh, it's very big difference. So it's more easier to gather normal network traffic uh, than anomaly. So we use only normal data. Uh, the numerical val values are uh, transformed using Z standardization 
and uh, nominal uh, values are uh, replaced with uh, binary uh, using dummy coding. For local outlier factor, we need to support two uh, parameters. It's uh, the number of uh, nearest neighbors. Usually we use uh, square root from all data used uh, to train model. And another <coughs> parameter is threshold value. We choose six different uh, threshold values uh, and uh, prepared six different uh, data sets. Uh, using this uh, <coughs> threshold values, if the uh, record uh, is higher than the threshold value, this record is uh, considered as outlier and we throw it up out uh, uh, from the normal data set. Uh, in detection phase, we use these six uh, data sets and uh, uh, take one record from test data compared with normal data and also uh, applying local outlier factor <coughs> using uh, different result values. Uh, uh, this is uh, values used for cleaning and uh, uh, for the in detection phase, we use the detection threshold value. Uh, in uh, local graph factor algorithm, um, if the loaf value is higher than one, uh, this uh, mean, which mean that outlier is uh, detected. Uh, for <coughs> experiments, we use well-known NSC NSL KDD data set. Each record of this data set uh, yeah, uh, has uh, 41 <coughs> attributes. It's protocol type, service, flags, durations, and others. And two additional attributes, uh, it's type and the difficulty level of uh, each record. From training data set, as I mentioned, uh, we use only normal data. And uh, for in detection phase, we use all these uh, data sets. We, hear, we see here five different uh, uh, data. Here is uh, denial of service attacks. Uh, normal data, probing and the network scanning uh, attacks, uh, remote to local attacks, and this is user to root, uh, uh, root access attacks. Uh, experimental results. <coughs> Here we see the preparation, the training phase. Uh, after the training, we received six uh, different data sets. We see that when we use very low threshold value, uh, there are 25 percent uh, outliers found. So uh, first three uh, data sets I think should, um, should uh, make uh, the biggest impact on outlier detections. We will see in experiments. And uh, here are two features. Uh, we see this is uh, calculated low values for only attacks records and here is low values uh, for normal data and we see that uh, if we want to uh, recognize more attacks so we need to take uh, uh, as low a threshold value as possible because for example if we take threshold value 5 and we will be able to detect only 1000 attacks this is not very good so we need uh, lower the threshold value yes but we see that if we use uh, data sets which, was, uh, which we, we are, were cleared with threshold value equal to 2 or lower, we can increase the number of detected atta attacks. Mm -hmm. So uh, the opposite is uh, we need <coughs> to use higher threshold value for normal data. Uh, if we use, if we <coughs> starting to use very low value, so we will uh, get uh, many false positives. So we need to find the uh, optimal uh, between these two threshold values and we use <coughs> accuracy. Uh, we see that if a detection threshold uh, is uh, bigger, uh, <coughs> then the data sets for, after for detection uh, is used with, threshold, with cleaning threshold more than two, the accuracy is starting uh, it's decreasing, yes, it's not good. We <coughs> need to use uh, data sets which are uh, get, uh, which are received using threshold value lower or equal to two. 
So, uh, if we, if you see here, it is very promising uh, uh, feature where, where we, we can use uh, low threshold value for attack detection. So, we take uh, this data set using two uh, cleaning threshold value and uh, use this figure of true positive and false positives to find the best threshold value which gives us uh, the highest accuracy. Uh, with this threshold value, the accuracy was uh, 0 0.84. <coughs> Additionally, I would like to show uh, uh, the low values of user to uh, root uh, access attacks. Uh, Mm, many uh, machine learning algorithms have difficulties to detect this type of attacks and uh, as we see here uh, we have in total 67 uh, attacks but uh, the local outlier factor algorithms allow to us to detect uh, 50 attacks and we see what the low value is uh, about 20, so it's very good uh, for uh, attack detection. And uh, conclusion. <coughs> uh, the accuracy of anomaly detection highly depends on the training data set preparation. And we found what the best accuracy is when we using uh, threshold uh, 2.3. And uh, the try cleaning process during data preparation step is very uh, also important because it allows to exec exclude normal records uh, which may intersect with density location of anomaly records and affect uh, loft value. So it's very important <coughs> to choose uh, correct cleaning threshold uh, if we use <coughs> very too small threshold. So uh, we remove the data and uh, the rest data will intersect uh, with attacks uh, low value so we can be able to detect them. So thank you for your attention. How often do you have to tune this algorithm after every you know, package? Uh, uh, software installation or something like that. How, how long does it take to, to tune? Uh, <coughs> we do not analyze uh, this. We take only this data set and find the best value using uh, this data set and uh, NSL PDD. If we want to use this method to another network, so we need first of all to collect uh, normal uh, network traffic prepare the model and then we can uh, tell which the values uh, would be okay for, for that network. And you have mentioned that you have uh, 41 yes. main attributes. Yes. Uh, yes. Do you consider them as, uh, as all together or do you, s are you se separate them? Mm -hmm. and analyze, uh, you know, separately to, to find an abnormalities? In this experiment we used uh, all, all these values. Uh, of course, <coughs> we can uh, make another experiment and try to find the best uh, features would uh, make uh, the highest impact on detection. But in these experiments, we try to use all all these features. Different methods of attack may uh, yes, of course, different, different impact on on detection. Yes. Okay. Some other questions? If not, thank you for your thank you. The next speaker is. Hello, uh, my name is Tulba Parlar, I'm from Turkey. I prepared this uh, paper with my colleagues as well which is not here. Uh, my paper title uh, is about a feature selection method, uh, intelligent water drop based feature selection method for sentiment analysis. This is my content. 
what others think has always been an important piece of information, like which car should I buy, which movie should I watch, or which school should I apply to. So sentiment analysis can be seen as a form of text classification uh, that uh, automatically determines the sentiment of a review document, especially positive or negative. Uh, why sentiment analysis? Uh, for many cases, many people rely on online reviews before making purchase decision. What do people think about uh, the new iPhone or public relations or marketing? How is consumer confidence? Is it increasing? For automatic summarization, how many reviews are positive or negative? Sentiment analysis classifies the sentiment of a review document, usually positive or negative. Uh, sentiment analysis applications include opinionated web search and automatic analysis of reviews. And those studies uh, extensively in different languages and domains. However, the rapidly increasing amount of online documentation has made it difficult and time consuming. In order to increase the performance of the classification process, feature selection methods are applied to determine the most valuable features. Uh, feature selection is very important in two respects. The efficiency of the training process increases significantly by reducing the number of features, and the accuracy of classification increases by choosing most valuable features. In this study, our, our aim is to investigate the effects of our proposed intelligent water drops based feature selection algorithm on classification performance or for sentiment analysis. For this purpose, we compare our IWD based feature selection method with a well known feature selection method called Relief F. Relief algorithm is proposed by Kyra and Randall as a simple, fast, and effective approach to feature weighting. Kononenko extends the relief algorithm and proposes the relief F uh, algorithm for multi-class problems. We use uh, relief F algorithm from Weka data mining tools. IWD-based feature selection algorithm is implemented to select best features to provide an accurate and fast classification. Uh, our algorithm constructs an optimal solution through cooperation among a group of agents called water drops. This algorithm imitates the phenomena of a swarm of water drops flowing with a soil along a riverbed. Procedurally, each water drop incrementally constructs a solution through a series of iterative transitions from one node to the next until a complete solution is obtained. Water drops communicate with each other through an attribute called soil, which is associated with the path between any two points. The soil value is used to determine the direction of movement from the current node to the next. This is the pseudocode of our uh, algorithm. First, uh, initialize the parameters. The parameters are the initial soil of features, initial velocity of water drops, uh, and uh, number of water drops, soil parameters, and velocity parameters. And for each IWD, uh, do those uh, items uh, do this loop until the termination condition is made, is met. And at the end of the algorithm, uh, algorithm returns the best uh, feature set. Uh, the fitness function of node i is, and the g soil is uh, calculated according, uh, determined according this uh, formulation. Uh, okay. This uh, mean function returns the minimum value of its arguments. After selecting n features according to probabilities, the training dataset is classified. Higher F-score means selected features are valuable. Then F-score value is used to update the velocity and the soil values. 
the amount of soil uh, that the IVD, IWD loads from the selected feature is, uh, where time function is, and the soil update as follows. The soil values of all features are updated as follows. All these processes continue for each IWD until the termination condition is uh, obtained. Our data set, uh, we investigate the effects of our proposed uh, feature selection method using the Turkish Twitter data set. We extract only alphabetic characters as features and calculate their weights using term frequency. We do not apply stemming because of Turkish is an agglutinative language uh, and we use maximum entropy classifier using five-fold cross-validation. Uh, this is logistic regression classifier from VECA data mining tools. Um, we initialize uh, IWD parameters uh, according to referred paper. This is one of our paper. Uh, then uh, for each uh, loop and features are chosen and these parameters uh, are initialized according to referred papers also. Our uh, method selects a predefined number of features for each water drop then we evaluate the performance of the selection by using the maximum entropy classifier. According to F-score values, we update soil and velocity values and selection probabilities of the all features. Uh, we obtain our baseline as um, 0.691 by using all features. This is our baseline. The performance of the classification results has been increased significantly over the baseline. This is our baseline and for some feature cutoffs, uh, this is the uh, results of our uh, method. As you can see, uh, we obtain the uh, best uh, F-score with uh, 250 cutoffs. As you can see, uh, we can compare our algorithm with Vano uh, uh, filter based feature selection method. Yes. This is our conclusion. Experimental evaluations show that our method uh, is able to select better features with respect to well known reliable feature-based feature selection method. Uh, also uh, reduces the classification time sharply without loss of accuracy in the classification. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? So maybe the basic one uh, you mentioned about the sentiment. Huh? Yeah. What type of Sentiments you can uh, you know, differ from mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with your algorithm. Sorry. What are you ah, okay. looking currently? Uh, what features uh, are mm -hmm. you recognize in the mm -hmm. a, 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 a text? Yeah. Yes. In the text and uh, uh, what is you know Basically what is the positive or the negative? Positive we of, we uh, use a data. Uh, our data set is according uh, is uh, based on um, telecommunication company Twitter uh, data set. So uh, the users think about the company uh, thinks positive or negative about the company. Yes. Okay. About the using this uh, communication company. And what type of features are you looking in in, uh, in these texts? Actually, uh, there are some uh, emo emoticons, or so there are some special uh, words and set of words. Actually, we select all the features uh, using back of words method, mm -hmm. and uh, the uh, method 
select most valuable ones. Uh, all the words we select first. Uh, the baseline, uh, baseline F score obtained with all the uh, features using back of words method. And then the our method selects most valuable ones. Uh, we we uh, try to show uh, the uh, performance of method uh, for this way. Okay. Yes. Can you give an example of the most valuable text? Uh, actually, uh, of course, uh, because of the we, we use a Turkish data set, um, we try a table. Uh, to add for our paper, but uh, Turkish is a different language, so uh, the meaning of the words uh, sometimes very uh, sophisticated, very uh, long sentences uh, for one word we obtain in English very long, uh, like a sentence. Uh, so this is very difficult. Uh, some, uh, now uh, I'm trying to uh, give you some words like bad uh, or good, but this is uh, more specific. But we uh, um, we obtain many others features uh, that um, uh, give the uh, emotion of the uh, users. Is it enough? I, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, I guess it but it you you, uh, you can email us if you uh, further uh, help. I can write better than my uh, speaking. <laughs> Thank you. I guess it depends on the on the text you analyze. If it is a political statement, you wouldn't be able to find an answer. If it is a Twitter about some yeah. company, but. Have you tried to use uh, some signs, special signs, or uh, not? Actually, or no. Like that? Actually, no. Uh, yes or no? Because uh, in this uh, data set, uh, uh, very little uh, emotional signs are used. Yes, mm -hmm. we we use them, uh, and uh, we uh, our, our algorithm selects some of them. It is enough for us. Thank you thank so you. much. So thank you again. <laughs> and the next speaker uh, is uh, Martin Janus from Estonia. Is that it? I'm aware you it's not the last presentation as we have uh, on the run. Uh, from the next uh, session, which was planned uh, after the lunch, but uh, uh, but it's moved to this. Uh, Good afternoon. I'm uh, Martin Janus, and I'm came from Tallinn University of Technology, and today. I'm going to speak how engineers try to recognize uh, a simplified voice command set. First question, of course, why? Because there are a lot of speech recognition systems available nowadays. But uh, most of them are using uh, uh, cloud computing and uh, firstly convert speech to text for example Google and Microsoft and uh, so on and uh, internet connection is often required and also uh, as we tested there are a lot of problems with small languages Actually, there are three levels of voice recognition. The simplest one is just to detect uh, 
uh, voice or separate voice from uh, background noise. For example, uh, clap triggered switches or actuators. The second one is the limited but uh, simple common recognition. And the third one is the full recognition, like uh, nowadays speech-to-text uh, uh, converters. Our goal was set to make uh, this second uh, idea. Uh, there are two, and two possibilities and one possibility we can buy from store there it is the standard English user commands. Uh, for example, Arduino voice recognition shield. And it works very good, but it uh, uh, requires uh, uh, English language. And we didn't manage how to, how to reprogram it. And applications. Actually, this topic was uh, set by one company who asked uh, us to make a cheap uh, voice-activated switch with, uh, which has uh, a small set of commands. For example, open door, close door, open window and so on. And it can be used in home automations or hands-free switches and in the places where the security is not very critical. For example, you, ha you have dirty hands and you need to move something through the door and you can't use uh, the movement sensor. Just you go to close the door and say open door. And how does it work? Firstly, we need to monitor the signal that is repu reproduced by a human using microphone and amplifier and we need to sample it. Uh, we investigated that uh, sampling rate, 8 kilohertz, is good enough because the highest uh, Formants uh, are below 4,000 4, kilohertz, and the length is uh, reduced to 1.8 seconds. But uh, uh, the voice sampling requires quite uh, deep, deep, deep bit uh, setting, and that's why. At last, 12 bits analog to digital converter is required. If we get this sample, for example, Estonian command T Lahti, that means open, uh, we normalize those levels and split signals by 20 to 50 milliseconds and uh, calculate the spectrum. Uh, to simplify the algorithm, we use only vowels, not consonants, as seen here. And uh, uh, those lengths are quite important. Second one uh, is the spectrum is needed to be average because if we have a male voice or female voice or child voice the f formats are in a little bit in, in different place if we don't use averaging then we can uh, make uh, to make a code that sends only certain voice, for example, male voice. Of course, if the command 
voice command is uh, recorded, each person can say it in very slow way or, or very fast. Uh, the, if the command uh, was recorded, it needs also dynamic time wrapping. To f uh, also, uh, <coughs> the uh, need to calculate the first and the last point, and uh, this algorithm takes uh, six different speeds for comparing, which is much, which which is the represents the better one. Then. The calculations begins. Uh, here you can see uh, discrepancy calculation. Uh, 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 that means the difference uh, command uh, difference in decibels in times. For x sample, how does it work? Ah, okay. This is pointer. Okay, no. okay. As, as I say, the lahti, I get a letter A in certain level. And I is the higher level, but also has a higher frequency. And uh, uh, the database is created for the sequence of uh, vowels and uh, duration. And the calculation uh, uh, was made in decibels. Firstly, uh, uh, is recorded the sample signal and uh, the mini database from is created from average spectrums. Okay, and after that, uh, fusion logic uh, uh, was applied. Uh, all the those uh, uh, spectrum match fully overrated spectrums. Then it's very okay if they are doesn't match at all then is a rejected, rejected command. But the interesting part is something in the middle. Uh, uh, when some p part of command is uh, accepted but other is rejected, then I use, used uh, additional parameters. First, uh, you can set the different uh, pa parameter threshold and of course uh, signal length difference penalty to differ it from random noise. This is the example of uh, calculated tables. Uh, the, if the, the the threshold is uh, high, then the green one is accepted. The yellow one is mostly accepted, other are rejected. If they are in out of zone, of course the zone can be adjusted. And at, at the final, how many examples, commands are needed? The test sh showed that the system needs to be trained, uh, I think, six or seven times. If the system, if the training rate is uh, eleven times, then the non-detection percent goes to very low, or detection goes to about ninety 
597%. And comparison of uh, other recognition, recognition systems. If we use general purpose Estonian speech recognition, speech uh, is recording, recorded using uh, microphone and calculated mm, in the cloud computing, then the uh, probability is quite low. But uh, our work showed that uh, language, language dependent, independent user trainable algorithm can be used and the uh, I want to ac make an ac acknowledgement to uh, Fintrek OU Tallinn Estonia who uh, asked uh, to do this work and uh, thanks for listening. So, uh, I mean, uh, this system is uh, rather for industrial partners. Industrial partners, yes. Yeah, the, some devices which use yes. something like that. Are you able to uh, use that for uh, for uh, for normal people uh, j just to buy and to, uh, to uh, maybe maybe in the future? Yes, uh, they are trying to make now fully working prototype. What can be mounted? into wall socket or instead of uh, uh, normal switch. Of course, this uh, algorithm can be used also in remote control. That, uh, for example, to control television or radio set, uh, channel up, mm -hmm. channel down. And uh, some people who buy, who, who would buy some uh, devices would record or could train the Yes, they need to record to to uh, this, uh, their own, uh, this own voice. And also we have a proposal to use this for recognizing pets. For example, cat goes near to door and uh, makes some uh, mouse and the uh, system recognizes current cat and opens the door. It's funny. Uh, it's fine, but maybe of yours. Thank you very much for your presentation. <laughs> and, uh, and the last speaker, uh, Gosku Gorel uh, from Turkey. Hello everyone, uh, my name is uh, Göksu Görel. Uh, I study in the Electrical and Energy Department of Çankırı Kartike University uh, from Turkey. Uh, my presentation title is Effects on Load Frequency Control of a Solar Power System with a 2 array Interconnected Thermal Power Plant and its control with a new BFE algorithm. Uh, my presentation context uh, is the uh, introduction power system, uh, photovoltaic model, load focus control and controllers, uh, conventional uh, controller, uh, physiologic PI and BFE PI controller, and uh, result conclusion and finally question. And uh, uh, the main uh, aim is here to, is to keep the power system in a normal operation condition in the figure, uh, what we doing is here. For this reason, uh, frequency is the most important parameter of the normality of a power system. Uh, the normal operation uh, of an interconnected grid depends on a balance between uh, production and consumption centers. If uh, there is an incompatibility between the power produced by generators and uh, loads, a change will occur in the operation uh, frequency of the system. And the solar energy power plants uh, are potentially the most common among the uh, renewable resources uh, as the operating condition of a solar power plants are not the same as uh, conventional uh, fuel plants. 
and there is a rapid instability between uh, the produced and consumed energy values as a result of being climatic and uh, uh, climatic condition as a sudden decrease in the produced solar power value. Uh, as an innovation about load focus control BFE, uh, bacterial foraging uh, algorithm PI and uh, fuzzy logic control of PI uh, were designed as a controllers in interconnected grid with solar uh, energy. And th this figure uh, is, is the main uh, study. Uh, in uh, the modeling uh, has a two area. Uh, every area has a, a three parameters. Uh, generators, uh, generated power, uh, photovoltaic uh, solar energy, and demanding power system. And uh, uh, in our system, the uh, uh, most important uh, parameters, area control error, is mathematical background is here. <coughs> and B1 uh, is every, uh, of every uh, area, uh, frequency constant. And GG and GT uh, generated model and uh, uh, transfer model background. And this is uh, this figure is our study of uh, uh, simulated model. And here the uh, four uh, controls separately implementation in the our two array interconnected power grid. And turbine model, generator model, and photovoltaic system, uh, power system, and tie line, uh, tie line uh, modeling in here. Uh, the controllers, uh, uh, first the controllers, commercial controller, uh, PI and PID control methods are uh, preferred mostly in a lot for control uh, study in literature. Control blocks uh, need two types of signal. Uh, firstly, uh, one is the steady state error, and secondly, error uh, value, uh, which represent the temporary overshoot. In the uh, PID control mathematical equation, uh, during the control process, the signal nickel method was applied for PI and PID coefficients. And uh, fuzzy logic PI controller, uh, it's difficult to apply the control uh, defined by conventional methods such as a, a signal nickel method uh, to the flexible continuously changing system. Uh, the, uh, the PI controller that was set with the fuzzy logic, uh, in uh, this figure, uh, fuzzy logic PI controller uh, block shame uh, in the ACE and the delta ACE in the two parameters. And here, whole simulation and the fuzzy logic PI control implemented here, and the error uh, and the implementation system in here. And secondly, uh, uh, controller bacterial foraging PI controller. Uh, the approach is the algorithm is inspired by the uh, physical and biological life of bacteria. Uh, the first step is the transforming the problem of the system. Uh, the second, the most important step is to arrange the bacteria according to swarm uh, information. As a final step, it can be true as an uh, optimal solution uh, search. Uh, any iteration of BFA comes from, from four basic stages, uh, chemotaxis, swarming, reproduction and elimination. And here, uh, the BFA algorithm uh, chart and uh, uh, in our system, uh, we implement the controller uh, uh, as a coefficient uh, PI controller. Uh, firstly, uh, KPK uh, is set as zero and uh, running in the system. And uh, uh, after that, we uh, gave uh, ACE error in the system, uh, initialization uh, for BFAO parameter. Uh, first iteration, after first iteration, uh, we gave uh, KPK in the system, and the second iteration, third iteration. After the uh, 100 iteration, maybe 200 iteration, uh, best value uh, for KPK implementation in the system. Uh, 
first uh, after uh, whole iteration best KPK in here and the results uh, the study about load frequency control of a two array interconnected power system which uh, included solar uh, panels that are under the effect of climatic change and shadow effect uh, this uh, demand, low, uh, demand load change and this uh, solar power change and uh, in, in here uh, thanks to the shadowing effect uh, decline in the power volume uh, 35 second uh, starting and uh, the whole results at point A and point B and point C uh, we want to detail uh, point B uh, 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 this figure shows BFA uh, controller is the best uh, uh, controller uh, of the system and the uh, second, uh, second and mostly uh, aim <coughs> of the, uh, my article uh, in here and shadowing effect uh, because uh, decreasing and continuously uh, power uh, implementation of this uh, power system and here uh, first uh, effect and uh, decreasing effect uh, in here because uh, load uh, sorry uh, power continuously decreasing and uh, we want to uh, frequency changing is zero is zero uh, the best uh, controller also uh, bfi api parameters uh, in the near of the reference and conclusion, uh, some modern uh, control techniques called the fuzz logic PI and uh, BFA API were designed. It, the proposed BFA API control had better value in terms of the uh, settling time and overshoots. Uh, besides, it was seen that the proposed controller could keep the steady state error in their nominal value and the frequency can be kept with the desired values. Uh, thank you for listening to me. Is there any question? Uh, what are you um, controlling? You are changing the conventional plant because of uh, photovoltaic cell, which is very local, uh, pro is producing a uh, low energy. Okay. Uh, we control uh, just uh, fuel power plants and not control photovoltaic system. Uh, photovoltaic system only affect in the uh, implemented the power system as a power. Okay, but you are trying to solve a task which is solved many many years ago and is used in the power plants because uh, the frequency depends on the load. Uh, uh, no matter whether you have a photo photovoltaic cells or not. Yeah? So. Uh, what is the goal of, of your work? Uh, the main goal is uh, here. Uh, uh, in here, sorry. What is the change? You know, if you have a conventional uh, power plant and uh, it, have, it, ha it may have, um, uh, for instance, two, uh, 250 megawatts. Okay. Yeah. And so what a uh, solar plant, so, so solar panel, you would have to have uh, to, to change the frequency of, 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 of the net. What, uh, what amount of energy you are going to produce by the solar, 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 uh, solars yeah? uh, to obtain such uh, changes of frequency? Okay. Uh, as I say, uh, the solar power uh, decreasingly continuously, and uh, frequency control uh, continues to uh, also uh, working uh, continuously. But uh, not uh, there is also there is no uh, photovoltaic system uh, in here pulse, in, for example, in here pulse. Uh, demanding power, but here uh, continuously demanding and the uh, control uh, section 
is whole simulation. And, uh, and the second question was uh, about the scheme. Are you sure that the, that the model you have used for the conventional power plant uh, is, uh, you know, is a good model? Is it a good model? You have a, only a turbine and the, the simple second order uh, inertia for, for <laughs> modeling the, of the, the whole plant. In the uh, it's <laughs> it sounds <laughs> ridiculous. Classical model. Uh, every uh, classical model for, for MATLAB simulations, but is it a good model for power plant? I don't know. Ah, that's the crucial question. Yeah? Try to find a better model and uh, it may be a you know, identification of such model uh, may be a task for from themselves. Uh, and, uh, but without that uh, precise model, you know, you can find each type of PID algorithm. Uh, and uh, okay. Uh, I guess that this uh, BFA algorithm uh, gives better results for, for your model. Uh, but I'm not sure that it, uh, you can easily uh, shift that to the in industry. Mm -hmm. That's my comment. Any other questions? If not, let us thank you very much. For <laughs> it was uh, the last presenter, so I close the session. Uh, thank you very much for, for your attendance.